Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And welcome to another edition of Tuesday and FootballArchaeology.com Day. We visit with the host of that site, Timothy P. Brown. Tim, welcome back to the Pig Pen. Hey, Darren. Looking forward to chatting and coming out smelling like roses. Smelling like roses, indeed. Now, Tim, you were a, a big help a few years ago when we were celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Rose Bowl. We, I don't know, we had uh, umpteen days of uh, Rose Bowl history, and you were a big part of that. And uh, we got to talk a lot about the Rose Bowl. Uh, this story, I don't know if we covered it in the detail that we probably should have. I know, I know, you talked about this Rose Bowl, but th this was a, a pretty cool story that you wrote on your tidbit of December 29th, 1917. 1918 Rose Bowl coaches. I don't know if we got into the coaches as much as we, we should have, but uh, we're going to get into them tonight. So please share. Yeah. yeah. So the tidbit was published on December 29th, 2017. Not anyways, but it, it was like a hundred years after, after the event. Um, so what, what happened is, you know, I, my first book was, uh, it's called Fields of Friendly Strife, and it's a book about the uh, the the two Rose Bowls that occurred in 1918 and 1919, and they were uh, they they had military teams rather than college teams playing those in those Rose Bowls. So I basically kind of covered how it all came about, why they had military teams, who they were, where these guys came from, and then in the case of the guys who played in this in the game we're talking about i also covered what happened to them when they went over to france or wherever they went you know during the war so but you know th this particular story was more about the coaches of, the, of that of those teams so the two teams uh one was the mare island marines and mare island uh was and still is but you know it's an island that's in I'll just say San Francisco Bay general, generally, mm -hmm. you know, if, um, you know, if you're from San Francisco, you might say, Oh no, it's over this direction. Okay. Whatever. It's, it's in the big body of water, you know, <laughs> that ends up, you know, going under the golden gate bridge. Um, and so it was at the time it was, if you join the Marines and you, were located west of the Mississippi, you went to Mare Island for training camp. You know, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have uh, Pendleton and everything down in San Diego at the time. So, um, so that was, that was the training camp for folks west of the Mississippi. And then the other team that played was called Camp Lewis. It is now joint base, Lewis, you know, it's like a, I think it's a joint army air force base or something like that, but it's in Spokane or I'm sorry, um, Tacoma area. And, and that was a base that during world war one, most of the training camps for the army anyways, they were organized regionally. And so if you were, you know, if you grew up in Michigan and kind of that general area, then you trained at camp Custer, which is, west of detroit and then they you know wherever you lived in the country there were different bases like that all the all the draftees went there and trained and then they shipped over to france so camp lewis was the place for pretty much anybody from california montana idaho washington oregon you know because those weren't heavily populated areas at the time so that's who you know that was a you know that was an army base so um the coaches let me talk to the camp camp lewis first because their coach was a guy named red stanton and he he had uh he bet he was in the army during the spanish and american war which is kind of crazy to think about you know but <laughs> you know you know he was and so um and then after that he then he ended up coaching at pomona and occidental so LA area, you know, smaller schools, but he was, you know, very successful coach. And then when World War One starts, he, he enlisted. And so he's at Camp Lewis, you know, and he's, at least as far as West Coast people are concerned, he's considered a, you know, pretty, 
pretty big name from a coaching standpoint. So he's a Camp Lewis. And so naturally, when they start a football team, they say, hey, uh, you know, Captain uh, Captain Stanton, <laughs> guess what you're going to do? So he ends up, you know, taking on responsibility for coaching the team. Um, the Marines, on the other hand, didn't have a coach. You know, they had an athletic officer. And so he handled kind of the AD sorts of things, scheduling and the money and all that kind of stuff. But the team was basically coached during the regular season by uh, by the captain, you know, and or, you know, a couple of other players. And so during the season, the, the Marines took a trip to the Northwest and they end up training for a week at Oregon, where a guy named Hugo Bezdek is the coach. And now the Marines captain and three or four other top players had played for Bezdek at Oregon the previous year. So they were, you know, they had a very nice, comfortable, you know, relationship. And he trained them, you know, as they were kind of traveling around. He trained them for like one week, you know, in between games. Uh, and then once they got the Rose Bowl invitation, they they were like, hey, coach, you know, can you help us out here? So he came down and, uh, you know, and he, he coached the team as they prepared for the Rose Bowl. Now, again, he wasn't really their coach during the regular season, but he was uh, for the Rose Bowl. But Bezdek's a really interesting character. He was one of the first real showmen, you know, showboaters in the coaching profession. He had, he played at Chicago under Stag. Then he goes and coaches at Arkansas. And it's un while he was there that they became known as the Razorbacks. So, you know, a little tidbit within a tidbit. Um, and then he ends up out at Oregon. And uh, so he he took the he took Oregon to the Rose Bowl in 1916. I think I, yeah. He took him to the Rose Bowl in 1916. Um and then, um, and then in 1970, well, 19, yeah, 1970, no, 1917 Rose Bowl, 1916 season. And then the next year, he's coaching this Marine team in the Rose Bowl. So it's kind of a cool thing. And then later on, he ends up at Penn State, and he coached Penn State in the Rose Bowl. So he was the first guy to coach three teams. Um, all the time he was doing this, he was coaching the Philadelphia uh, Phillies in the major leagues, you know, so, <laughs> you know, that was back at the time where coaches like football coaches would show up for like a four month period and head out, you know, they, they weren't involved in recruiting. They weren't, you know, they, they were coaches and then they went back and became, went and did their medical or law practice or they coached something else. So anyways, and, and just, yeah, guys like pop Warner are coaching like three time, three teams at the same yeah. time in one season. <laughs> Well, Bezdek, you know, he got uh, he he coached he, he coached uh, you know Oregon end of the season, then goes down and I'm sure he got paid, you know, got paid something for, right. for coaching the Marines. Hey, yeah, Bezdek's got a, I mean, he's interesting because you sit there and think about the coaches of that era. Most of the time, it's like Eastern coaches; they cut their teeth in the East and then they go out west and sort of you know finish their careers out there. This is guy that's sort of makes his name out West and then comes East to, to Penn yeah. state, you know, and does pretty well at Penn state too. Like yeah. you said. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point because um, yeah. I'm, you know, by the time he was coming around, you know, so he played, he was on uh, Chicago's 1905 national championship team. He may have been there one more year. I'm not positive, but you know, he played with Walter Eckersall and, you know, those kinds of guys. And and Walter Stefan. Um, so then who is pictured right there, by the way. Um, so you know, he ends up um yeah, I mean it, you make a really good point. You know, he he's a, a Western guy from the Midwest. <laughs> and then, you know, and then all of a sudden he's coming back east. And you know, but I think it was because he was doing the uh the baseball that he ends up getting the Penn State football job right yeah probably he's doing yeah. baseball on these you know it, it's amazing that he gets the the philadelphia baseball job you know from because there, there's any western teams really at that unless you go to like st louis or something but yeah, yeah. i mean you know he had coached 
he had coached like at Arkansas and, and then he, he was doing a lot of scouting, you know, I think mostly for the, for the major leagues. Maybe he did, maybe he, I don't remember right now, you know, he could have, he could have managed like in the summer, but he was just one of those guys who, like, he was one of those classic guys. He never turned down a buck, you know, he's like, <laughs> you know, Warner and Rockney, you know, those guys, if, if they could make a nickel doing something, they did it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so he was one of those guys. Yeah. Very, very cool. So yeah, you got that's some high profile coaches for the, for the time. So that, that's uh, definitely those. No wonder those teams uh, had a, a great game in Rose Bowl. You know, yeah. you have some some great mentors. Yeah, and then you know the game itself. Um, you know, uh, the Mare Island ends, ended up winning at thirteen to nothing. You know, in the Rose Bowl, but uh, but you know, pretty competitive game, and so, um, but you know, different different styles you know the marines were kind of a rough and tough smash mouth kind of team and uh camp lewis is a little bit lighter on their feet you know more of a sweeping kind of team neither one of them threw the ball a heck of a lot but you know that was the nature of the and, game back and that, that's a game when uh that's when uh, george hallis and patty driscoll played in that no was that, the, the next year. that was yeah, the next year the, okay okay 1919 because they, they played for great lakes that's right okay that's so, right yeah, the, they they played so, Mare Island also though. Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay. So they you know the Rose Bowl was trying to get an Eastern team and things just didn't in for the nineteen eighteen game things didn't work out, so they ended up you know grabbing Camp Lewis because the two you know Camp Lewis and Mare Island had played during the regular season, with uh, uh, Mare Island winning that game, um, so they ended up beating them twice you know in the course of the season. Well, very, very interesting stuff. Great, great stuff there. Now, uh, Tim, you have some uh, really some great military football articles in your tidbits. Uh, you, you probably a couple times a month, I think, regularly. Like you said, you wrote you've wrote a book on military football teams. And that's really I mean, that's your your uh, your sweet spot. I think you can tell you have a great passion for it. So, you know, uh, where can people find your tidbits and you know, find these military stories and these other great football historic uh, stories that you have? Yeah. So, you know, it's basically just, you know, go to footballarchaeology.com, subscribe. And once you do that, you'll get a, an email every, every time I publish an article there, you know, probably most of the articles are free. You know, I also you know, have, you know, paid subs subscriptions. So, you know, in those you'll get to read maybe a, a quarter or a third of the article and then, then it kind of cuts off. Uh, but that's the best way. You know, I, I also tweet and I, you know, post on threads, but, you know, when I post on, when I tweet it, like five people get the message, right? So, <laughs> so if you want to make sure you get it, you know, just the way the algorithm algorithms work, the algorithm says, if you, if you subscribe, you're going to get uh, access to the story every time, you know, through an email. So. All right. Up. All right. Well, that's how you get it, folks. And uh, make sure you check that out because he's got some great stuff coming out uh, regularly. So, Tim, we really thank you for joining us and, and telling the story of football history. Very good. Thank you, sir.